not a YouTuber, just like making videos. And in this video here, we're going to talk about black slavers and white women slavers. Recently, the Republicans are trying to pass some bill, you know, revisionist. I'm saying that public schools that speak about slavery have to speak about black uh, plantation owners who also benefited from slavery instead of just saying all white people were the only slaveholders. And supposedly if they don't do this that they're going to cut funding to public schools because this is in retaliation of the critical race theory. And I would agree that there were black slavers. There's no doubt about that. J.A. Rogers spoke about that in his book as if J.A. Rogers was a mulatto um, who grew up on a plantation. His, his father was a slaver. Now the thing here is here about America that um, mul uh, uh, America is one of the only places where a mixed person will be considered a, a full black. Even in a race of South African, a mixed person is considered a mixed person. So therefore, there was a lot of mulatto and creed slave owners. But as far as slavery being taught in public schools, when I went to public school, I've, I've hardly learned anything about slavery. Just that slave was in the South and Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. I didn't know about the slaves up north, about the idea of there was slave holding states and non slave holding states. I didn't know about uh, uh, New York and uh, Massachusetts and Boston, Massachusetts was major slave ports and so forth. I didn't know that Frederick Douglass was a northern slave or the idea of an urban slave. So Therefore, they didn't teach us about Jim, uh, Jim Brown, I mean John Brown. So therefore, public schools have done a pitiful job in, in teaching people and we only learned about slavery during February. But let's get into it because this whole idea of, of the black slaver has become somewhat of a phenomenon and it's something white people are definitely going to use as a crutch and I put a lot of white a lot of the battery and a lot of uh, the revisionist back and so forth. They'll tell you that how black slavers were the biggest uh, plantation owners in America. And my thing is with that, if you had all these black slavers, the good thing that'll come about it that black people would have had some sort of economic power. And economic power to, uh, uh, to change the law. That, you know what I'm saying, this this wealth from slavery that there's no way Jim Crow laws to come in power because you would have had these black people who were descendants of black slavers who had uh, who had an enormous amount of power in the south but we're about to get into that um, first of all let's talk about uh, white women slavers you know, something that's somehow neglected in history. So, uh, we're going to talk about everything. Let's bring, let, let's bring it all out. White women constitute for 40% uh, of slave owners. Matter of fact, Martha, George Washington's wife, before George Washington married her, was one of the wealthiest women in America who owned 84 slaves. White women uh, bought and sold slaves slaves and breeded slaves they was integral and the hope on a whole slavery process right in fact there's even a book written about it um so white women want to be a part of this me too movement and start feminism why don't we talk about all the white women female slaveholders there were you know a lot of them inherited slaves from their dead husbands and so forth but I'm like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let, let, let's uh, talk about it and so forth. So we can't talk about black slaves owners without talking about white women slave owners. Um, as far as black slave owners, out of the two million slaves that was here in America, um, oh, a little over two million slaves 
about 1300 of them slaves was owned by black people so black slave owners was a small minority and could we really blame them black people black slave owners were opportunist a lot of them come from plantations a lot of them were the head house nigger and their plantation and they was opportunist they wanted economic growth the same as the white man so therefore i'm not worried about the dog i'm worried about who let the dog loose and the racial component added into slavery. Slavery existed everywhere, all over the world. You know, we all know this. Um, but this, there's a racial component. And when we go into slavers in Africa, you know, there was black slave traders, and they was wasn't slaving their own people, but slaving other African tribes that spoke a different language. So it wasn't about, oh, these are your own people. You're enslaved your own people. The black slavers, their incentives was money. Molasses or guns. But there was some sort of monetary gain there. So therefore, if the white slaver comes and pays the black man to enslave or capture other slaves, his incentives are money. So that means if the white slaver was to pay the black man, here, I'm gonna give you this, start bar up going buck, buck, like a chicken he'll do it he'll <laughs> his incentives was money if he told him to bark like a dog he would say woof woof you know and that's the thing so therefore we have to look at regardless if the slaver was white or black nobody wants to be a goddamn slave what about one's person's individual rights and why is the most powerful nation, a nation that claims to be about all men is free, even have slaves in the first place. And then there's this one slave owner people are talking about. His name was William, God damn, what's his name? William, William Ellison. They saying that this guy was like the meanest slave owner in history. And it's black slavery, William Ellison. That this guy, he, he's a bad man. I'm like, this dude can raise a dead slave from the grave and have him pick cotton. This dude can jump in the water and surf a shark. This dude can kick a volcano and stop it from erupting. Oh, that William Medicine, that's a bad man. He was the most ruthless slave owner. He's a bad, bad man. I'm like, there's been plenty of slave revolts here in America. Of black people rebelling against white people killing white people so don't you think for a second that a black person won't rebel against a black slaver that if a lot of slave revolts happen because this plantation owner was a whole lot mean and very cruel and kind of stepped over bounds and and me knowing black people you know what I'm saying how is black people really going to respond to the authority of another black man when he knows his power is limited when a, a black slaves to see how white men will talk down to their black slave owner <laughs> a white dude to come and, and you know a, the black slave owner have to pull out all kind of paperwork to prove he's the owner of a plantation and a white dude said a black slave owner well <laughs> Well, call me a hair on a tick's ass. You know how them southerners talk and so forth. And then if this guy, uh, uh, William, William the Black Sloaner, if he was really a badass, that he would, you know, uh, he, he would have a white woman. He would parade around a white woman. If white slave owners were screwing black women, then of course that black slave over wanting to prove that he has druthers wanted that same power would uh screw white women if a black slave owner had a staple of white women that he's fucking they know that he would be a dead man he knows that so a black slaver can only have so much power in my opinion black slaves under a black man will have to be treated with the same same or even given some leeway 
that the black slavery have to be like, man, you either you do what I say or I'll sell you to that white man. You know, that white man ain't gonna have mercy. That that's the only way it worked. If a black slaver was really mean and really cruel, his black slaves will, will uproot his ass the same way a black slave will uproot a white man. You know, that's the thing. And, and here's something. Hold on. I have, we speak about, uh, you know what I'm saying, and some people may talk about white endeavored servants, that were there are black slaveholders having white slaves or these white endeavored servants and so forth and that was because they'll tell you there was white slaves too and i want to read something that i wrote down that there was an act passed it's called the act of concerning servants and slaves this act that was passed by law through congress prohibited black men black slave owners for owning white slave or white indigent servants. Matter of fact, it also pro prohibited freed black men. Let's say a, black, a wealthy black man wanna have a white butler or a white maid, somebody he's paying. There's a law that was passed against that. You know, so if a black, if a black, if you have a black slave owner that was a real Billy badass, you know, and if you had all these black slave owners that had power and there was no racial component, they would be fucking the shit out of white women. Why? Because the black, the black man, the white man was fucking black women. They know this. They say, hey, we're going to give this a bunch of white women. We're going to fuck them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I know that. that's very, uh, that seemed very crude, but that's what they, that's what they did. It's about power, but they know that they, they can't. The strong racial component. Hence, you know what I'm saying, it, it'll be over with for them. If all these black slavers they claim they had power went and grabbed them white women. So therefore, like in that movie Batman, The Dark Knight, where Two Faced, he said, when we're talking about the Joker, he said, Man, I'm not concerned about the Joker. I want the person that let him off his leash. So when it comes to slavery, I'm still, regardless of the, the the minuscule black slave owners there was, and then they said that by the Civil War, there was hardly any black slave owners. By the time of the Civil War, because things was getting critical. Things was getting critical. Black people knew that they was about to be freed, and there's no way black slave owners, you know, black people are already paranoid around other black people. You know, <laughs> so so you got a civil war coming. You got a black slave owner. He's like, damn, you know, they might be free. And, you know, black dudes ain't going to respect another black man's authority anyway. So, and this is a fact by the civil war. A lot of black black slave owners, you know, what I'm saying they just they wanted to sell sell off their slaves and get the fuck out of Dodge. You know, which would be the smart thing to do. They said, man, <laughs> I'm going to be the first person they go after. You know, if the slaves are free, you know, because black people, we go after other black people hard, way harder than we go, out, go after white people. So that's why I can't believe this notion of these extremely cruel black slave owners unless he's empowered and have white partners working with them side by side. But you can't tell me that there's going to be a plantation. This plantation is isolated with this black slave owner that's going to treat black people slaves. What's going to stop a slave from killing his black slave owner and they're pretending he's him? <laughs> you know, which would probably happen. You know, people didn't have ID cards back then. So when the white man came galloping through the slave and said, who's the owner of this? Some dude can say, hey, yeah, I'm William. You know what I'm saying? But still, when we go into the slave laws, it's about the laws that kept slavery in power. We're talking about the Fugitive Slave Act that was enacted by white men. We're talking about the act of concerning servants and slaves. Uh, the racial component. All of this was empowered, you know what I'm saying, by, by the white men. You know, and I don't care how many black slave owners there were. I'm like, when you... When you have presidents, the founding fathers were slave owners. That's pretty bad. And it's funny how when it comes to George Washington and Thomas Edison or 
Wesley's grant, we have to say, hey, they are men of their, they're just men of their time. So when it comes to a black slave owner, why can't I say they, they were just men of their time? They were just going by, you know, they didn't um, enforce this, the slave racial code. Matter of fact, I want you guys to look up slave codes, uh, um, a crash course in American history slave codes here on YouTube. And still, 40% of the slavers were white women. So if we're going to talk about history and talk about everything, let's bring everything out. Let's not leave nothing out. Let, let's not say, oh, you, since, since you got, since we find out about these black slavers, oh, you got a battery in your back now. You know, that, let's talk about everything. But that's all I want to say. Thanks for watching and never stop learning.